Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. Um, and happy Valentine's Day. I hope that uh, you've had lots of Valentine's things. If you have an other half, I hope there's not been any rows this morning. If you haven't got anything, remember you've got them. And uh, for those of us who are on our own, and I was in that position myself not so very long ago, um, just remember that whatever, we have God's love. So we are never alone. And I have with me this morning, I have George from um, Goldhanger. He's going to be preaching for us this morning. And I have Ed and Jeremy, who are married and are therefore allowed to be together um, <laughs> in these COVID times. They are from Solcott, um, although they actually live in Tolsbury. And they're going to do the prayers and the readings for us. Now, this week is actually marriage week. I hadn't even ever heard of it until I came here and uh, George and Karen from uh, Great Totten told me about it. I think it's a lovely idea and apparently in church they would normally have a renewal of, red of wedding vows for couples who wish to partake. So I'm going to try and do an online renewal of wedding vows this morning and we'll do that in just a moment after we've had the first hymn. Jeremy and Ed are going to be our token couple and are going to actually do the uh, responses. And if you haven't got your other half with you at this moment, now is your chance to go and grab them and uh, make them come and renew their vows, whether they really want to or not. You have the length of the hymn to go and find them if they're not already with you. So I'm going to play our first hymn, and that is Christ whose glory fills the skies, because I should also say it's actually the transfiguration today as well, when we celebrate the transfiguration of Christ. So this is Christ with glory fills the skies. So let's uh, see about renewing the marriage vow. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to say the husband's part, just like I would do if I was doing a wedding service. So I will say the vows and you can repeat after me. So I'm going to do the husband's first. So Jeremy, if you're at the ready, if 
you would like to repeat after me, you can look at, I'll let you look at your wife rather than look at me, because <laughs> it's a bit more romantic. <laughs> How many years has it been? Tell us again. 46. 46 years. Wow. Very impressive. That's lovely. So if you would like to turn to your wife, husbands, and repeat after me. Today, I renew the choice I made. Today I renew the choice I made. To take you to be my lawful wedded wife. To take me to be my lawful wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. And now wives, if you would like to repeat after me. Today I renew the choice I made. Today I renew the choice I made. To take you to be my lawful wedded husband to take you to be my lawful wedded husband to have and to hold to have and to hold for better or for worse for better or for worse for richer or for poorer for richer or for poorer in sickness and in health in sickness and in health to love and to cherish to love and to cherish till death us do part Till death us do part. Thank you. And now I'm going to pray for all the couples in our congregations. Let us pray. May God strengthen the love you have. May the bond of love be strong enough to keep you true to your pledge. So that your lives may be filled with the deep joy and peace which the God of love gives to those who are faithful to him. Amen. Thank you. Now we're going to turn to our normal order of service. Let me just bring that up. There we go. So we come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship him together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. Let's take a moment now to bring before God anything that's getting in the way of our relationship with him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are 
and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And if we could have our first two readings, please. First reading today is taken from 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes 
and tore them apart. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. He was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one but them anymore, only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When my children were growing up, there was a television cartoon series called He-Man. He was a superhero who battled against the evil Skeletor. And that story is not dissimilar from the story in the book of Revelation about the war in heaven when Michael and the angels battled against Satan. And at Michaelmas, the children were always enthralled with this story. Now today's gospel reading is another story that could find fire up their interest. It's a bit of a superhero sci-fi story, Transfiguration. Four men go up a high mountain and suddenly encounter two more who appear from nowhere. Then one of the four visibly changes, glowing white, radiating light. Then a cloud comes down and speaks to them. And suddenly the cloud and the strangers disappear. Could be from the episode of Star Trek. Mark's Gospel tells us it's six days after Peter's declaration that Jesus is the Messiah. It's also six days from when Jesus first foretold his death and resurrection. The disciples must have been in turmoil because the Jews believed the Messiah would come and they believed that the Messiah would be a great soldier or king. Jesus didn't appear to be either. But they didn't believe the Messiah would necessarily be divine. So perhaps they were thinking after all this that why is he saying he'll be rejected and killed? 
His popularity was growing. The crowds that followed him were growing. It's quite probable they were thinking, oh, before long, if it carries on like this, we will be in a position to seize power and the throne. So perhaps he's a soldier after all, which is something the zealots among them were looking for. So Jesus on the high mountain with three of his disciples. Of going up a mountain is a very Old Testament way to encounter God. Moses went up Mount Sinai to receive the law. Elijah too travelled from Sinai, travelled to Sinai to meet with God. So here we have Jesus and the disciples on a high mountain when suddenly Jesus is transfigured, glowing whiter, whiter than white, whiter than anyone could reach. Then the disciples see Jesus talking with two others, Moses and Elijah. Moses from a thousand years before, Elijah 800 years before. Why these two, you might ask? Well, I've got two possible suggestions. First, that neither Moses nor Elijah had a known grave. Moses was buried by God. His grave has never been found. And Elijah was, as we've just heard, taken up to heaven in the whirlwind. So God took them away, so also he could bring them back. Now, secondly, the coming of the Messiah would fulfill the law and the prophets. And here we have Moses, the great lawgiver, and Elijah, the great prophet. Perhaps it's a sign to Peter, James and John that Peter's assertion about the Messiah is true. But the disciples were terrified as Mark records. And Peter said the first thing that came into his head about building shelters for them. But then the cloud descended and obscured them. And a voice reminiscent of the voice of Jesus' baptism underlined that Jesus was the Son of God and that the disciples should listen to him. The cloud vanished and the two strangers were gone. Jesus was once more standing alone. It must have left the disciples thinking, is he a prophet? Is he really the Messiah? But they surely would listen more closely to his words from then on. Now, the transfiguration describes a very close encounter with God that only those disciples would witness. And its description harks back to when Moses went up to speak to God, and when he returned, he had to veil his face because it shone so bright no one could look at him. It's very unlikely we will experience such an encounter with God, but we can, and do, encounter him in the bread and wine of Eucharist. It's a very personal thing, but should we keep it to ourselves? No, as the, gospel, as the epistle reading says, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, let light shine out of the darkness. Now, some people are gifted as evangelists, missionaries, preachers and teachers, but what can we do to let the light shine out of the darkness? with vocation events coming up when we can explore what God may be leading us to do, guiding us to make better use of our gifts in the future. But what can we do now? We can live our lives distinctively as Christians and the light, God's light, will shine through the darkness. Amen. Thank you, George. Uh, we're now going to have our second hymn, and this is a, a favourite of a lot of people I know. This is Shine, Jesus, Shine.
I took the liberty of muting Jeremy and Ed there. Have you unmuted yourselves? You have. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> so now we come to the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And now Ed is going to lead us in our prayers. I've adapted today's intercessions from a prayer poem litany by Joseph Shaddle, who's a professor of theology at Javier University in Ohio. Gracious and loving God, you are our comforter and our hope. Hear our prayers as we come before you. For those who are sick, either with coronavirus or any other disease. For those with chronic illnesses and mental health concerns. For all those who are suffering. For those who are lonely or who face an uncertain future. For those who are unemployed or suffering financial hardship. For families that are separated and those who have no one to check on them. For those who are suffering from physical or emotional abuse. For those who are struggling with physical or mental disabilities. For those who are overwhelmed by anxiety and stress. For those who are dying and those who have survived. For those who have died while saving the lives of others. For those who mourn and those who comfort them. For firefighters, police and key workers. For doctors, nurses and all healthcare professionals. For those who serve in the armed forces. For public officials and business leaders who look to our interests. For teachers and educators who instruct our young people. For innovators and scientists who provide new solutions. For those who who have been devastated by recent natural disasters. For those who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, their security and their hope. For the work of relief agencies and those providing emergency assistance. For peace and unity in our world. For renewed friendships among neighbors for a greater appreciation and love of all humanity. For patience, perseverance and generosity of spirit. For calm in the midst of fear and hope in times of despair. 
for the grace to overcome adversity and for your light in our darkness. Gracious and loving God, strengthen us in this time of need. Inspire us to acts of friendship and generosity and give us hope of a brighter future. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Ed. So we come to the peace. Where two or three are gathered in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of your son set before us in bread and wine. As I now receive these precious sacraments on behalf of all, may the comfort and reconciliation they represent be tangible to all who are watching but unable to receive. Fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit wherever we are at this moment. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and I hope that whatever you're doing today you have a really blessed Sunday. Just um, a reminder that we have a service on Ash Wednesday and in the morning we're going to actually be recording the service. Sarah Clare is going to be doing that for me and it's going to be done slightly differently. It's going to be done as a Zoom meeting which you can join in if you wish. And uh, we'll be asking people to either um, do a sign of the cross on themselves, either in ash, if you have some ash to hand, perhaps you have a Palm Sunday cross from a previous year that you might like to burn to create the ash. Or if you haven't, don't worry, you can just use um, some olive oil, some cooking oil, anything, or just even a bare finger, just to make that sign of the cross on yourself or perhaps on each other, if you live with somebody. And if you want to participate in that Zoom meeting, um, you will have to be prepared to be recorded because we're going to record it and then put it on YouTube later in the evening because obviously some people are still working during the day and won't be able to participate so then they can watch it in the evening on YouTube. Or if you don't want to participate yourself in the Zoom, then watch out for it on YouTube. All the details are coming out in the newsletters, but it's Sarah Clare that you will need to contact if you want to be part of that Zoom meeting in the morning. And I do hope that you take up the offer because the more people we can have on that, it'd be really nice. It will give us a sense of congregation, even though we are separated from each other. We also have the Lent course, which is starting on the 24th of February, again on Zoom. And we're going to be using the book Being Disciples by Rowan Williams. Do rest assured, it is a readable Rowan Williams. Not all of his books are, but this one is. And uh, even if you, if you don't do Zoom, if you don't have the technology or don't wish to participate, I would encourage you just to buy the book anyway, because it has questions at the end of each chapter. And you could just do it on your own or with your family. Um, you don't actually have to join us, but obviously we'd be really pleased if you would like to. Do let me know if you want to join us again so that I can send you the Zoom invitation. That's quite enough from me. Go enjoy your Sunday and thank you for joining us this morning. God bless. <laughs>